Well, join me, Marcus, on another walk, and this time I'm taking you from Ogmore Castle over Ogmore Downs to St Bride's Major and back again. And as usual, I'm going to take you with me and show you a step-by-step -step guide of my route. The walk isn't too strenuous. It's just over four miles, about six and a half kilometers, and shouldn't take you more than one and a half hours. And the good thing, there's pubs at the start and at the halfway point. Unfortunately, I'm a little early for those today, but when you come to do it, make the most of it. <laughs> well, the weather's all over the place today. Look, sun now, clouds, wind, rain, this whales, what to expect. Well, anyway, the starting point. As I mentioned, I'm starting here at Ogmore Castle. Uh, I'll put the links to the starting point and a link to the map in the description below. There is free parking here for a few cars, but one thing, check the tide times. Occasionally, a few times a year, it can flood, so watch out for that. You can park in some laybys as you drive to Ogmore by Sea Beach. And you can also park over in Merthyr Mawr over there, cross the bridge and the stepping stones and start your walk that way. By the way, if you want to find out more about Ogmore Castle and the other castles in this area, I've done some videos on those on my other channel, Fly Drive Explore, and I'll link those below. Anyway, that's the basic info out of the way. Let's get started. So you walk up the hill from the car park, past the horse riding centre, up to the main road. And as you do so, you'll get great views of the castle behind you. And sheep. So when you join the main road, you can see one of the pubs there, the Pelican, but we're taking a left the other way, along the main road, but not for long. Only for about a hundred yards, if that. And over there, can you see the castle? <laughs> and the chorus of sheep. But don't worry, only a very small part of this walk is along the roads. So we've walked from the castle, along the main road, into the shade. You come to this painted sign, Ogmore, and you probably can see the route markers there. We head up this narrow lane. So this part of the walk uphill from Ogmore village is the steepest and the most strenuous. It's not very far and pretty soon we'll be up on Ogmore Downs. Hopefully you can hear me because the wind's really picked up. But you come straight up the hill, keep going straight. On your right, you'll see the golf club. 
and actually by one of the holes there and there's a T there for hole number 15. Anyway, we go straight past that and on your left you'll see a big hole, a quarry and we're going to go past that. So when you walk past the quarry, ahead of you to the right, you can see some farmhouses. Straight on, you can see you enter another field, but we're going to take a slight left. You may be able to pick up the path which veers off to the left. towards the telegraph poles. So we come off the common, rejoin a country lane, past some houses, and I don't know if you can hear that. This one here, <laughs> it's quite an aggressive dogging sometimes, <laughs> but it's fenced off. <laughs> so we continue down this lane, and we'll shortly be dropping down into St. Bride's Major. You can tell the time of year. Look at all these little lambs everywhere. Oh, look at that one. We've now dropped down into St. Bride's Major, as you probably can hear the traffic. And for a very small distance, we're gonna walk through the village, only for about 100 yards, up to the Fox pub, and then we're gonna take a right towards the church. So we walk a short distance through St. Bride's Major, and we come across the second pub on our walk and that's the fox. So, unfortunately, I'm too early. All the pubs are closed. So, continue walking. And when we get to the fox, we're gonna take a right. I think that's the pub that was owned by Gavin Henson, the former Welsh rugby player. Comment below if you know definitely. But anyway, that's the fox there. And we're taking a right off the main road towards the church. So the church is ahead of us, but we're taking this road here up the hill on the right. So 
So with the church on your left, we keep going uphill. Up there. You can see a small transmitter at the top of the hill. So there's some farm buildings on your right, a cattle grid in front of you, and we re-enter the common land, but we're gonna go left towards an entrance to a house. Excuse my panting, I've just walked up another hill. And it's quite tiring keeping your arm outstretched like this. Anyway, over the cattle grid. We're not going that way. We're going over there to the left. So you walk towards this house here. You can see a mini wind turbine at the entrance. Just to the left of it, there's a stone stile and we're heading over that. Again, like many paths in this area, uh, they fall into disrepair really. The maintenance hasn't been that good. And there was a sign here and it's fallen down. See what I mean about the maintenance? There's the sign indicating the way and it's uh, rotted. So we've crossed the field, come across another stile. And we take a left and keep going straight. Just to clarify again, we've come over that stile and then we take a left and follow the field boundary. So we're going to leave the fields. Go straight on. And on your right, there's a small fenced off field. And basically we're going to skirt the edge of that. We're going to turn right towards the trees over there. So, quite easy to follow. Keep the fence on your right and it curves round here. There is actually a way marker as well. So it curves round here and you walk down there. It is signposted. So when you first do this walk, you think you're going to continue through fields back to where we started. But this little section, the landscape changes quite dramatically. You drop into a little valley and it becomes sand and there's some rocks there. It's quite interesting, only a small section, less than a mile. But it was quite a surprise when you first do it. You didn't expect it. You think it's just going to be grassland or common land.
But as you come down this small valley, you come across this. It's an old well. Hello. So anyway, we continue walking past the well down this sandy path. So we keep walking down and as you can see, it's got much sandier. And we're going to turn slightly to the right over there, that way. So ahead of you, you can see Merthyr Mawr. A uh, lot of trees over there now. If you look carefully, you can see some of the dunes peeking through the trees. So we continue down, you'll be able to see the river. And again, and across the other side of the river, you can see some of the dunes. Very shortly, we'll be coming out on the main road, the main Ogmore by Sea Road. And that's the road we walked along briefly when we left the castle. And we come out in a little lay-by area. And I mentioned where you can park. Sometimes you can park in these small lay-bys. Often you get people in camper vans, which they're not meant to do, but you can park in some of these areas. Like I said, you can park uh, at the castle or halfway around St. Bride's Major. And also there's some areas by the common itself where some ramblers were today, you can park there as well. So I've made it to one of those laybys by the main road and about half a mile up there is the castle. But instead of walking along the road, just here, there, is a bridle way. So that keeps us off the road and it's a short distance and it comes out by the Pelican pub. So that's where we're going. So we come out just behind the Pelican pub. So that's the Pelican on our right. And we're going to cross here and you can see the sign Ogmore Castle left. And that's where we started. Horses getting ready for a hard day's pony tracking. Well, I'm back at Ogmore Castle. Not a bad walk, just over four miles. And more importantly, it stayed dry. Anyway, if you want to find out more about the history of Ogmore Castle and some ghost stories too, Check out the videos 
I'll link them below and there's one coming up at the end but until next time just remember keep walking